Hello guys, welcome back to another Calc video tutorials. In this video tutorial, we will go through torsional rigid diaphragm analysis module. So, uh, let me show you an example. So, let's assume that we have a building which looks like this 20 foot by 10 foot. This is just an example, and we have like three walls, let's say six inches thick and uh, 5 foot in length now uh, let's say uh, this is at second story and I have some wind force coming onto this diaphragm so now to distribute that wind force into these walls I'll be using my rigid torsional rigid diaphragm analysis in inner cal so let me show you in our calc once you go over here you select this you can you can say new project and save it and then go to add and in add under analysis you should find rigid diaphragm torsion analysis now i already have created one once i open this so i come up with description I'll just write down second story walls so that I can keep track of which story walls are those. Location of shear application will come to this at the end of the tutorial. And accidental torsion, which is usually 5% applied. But yeah, like we don't we do not be we won't be looking at this. Now I'm going to load magnitude. So I will select primary and orthogonal force, and let's say at second story, my wind force applied at the center of mass is under tips. Now I want this to be distributed into three walls. So first I will go into resisting elements and this is very important. Now I will say add element and uh, let me say wall number 1 ok then my x center of uh, gravity y c g would be the distance from the center of this building so now I'll be assuming the center of the building like I'll be assuming the deck sitting on this wall is a constant thickness two and a half inch thickness concrete or five inch thickness concrete so that in this example my center would be exactly located at 10 foot from this direction and 5 foot in y direction so if i call this out as my wall number 1 my x c g would be 10 minus 6 sorry 10 minus 4 it would be 6 nothing but negative 6 or go in here I'll say negative 6 feet similarly my y so I'll be assuming this as my base point yes so my y would be 2 and half in positive direction now uh, the wall rotation so if you have walls looking like this the rotation is 90 degrees and if you have horizontal walls the rotation will be 0 degrees so I'll select 90 degrees uh, you can select sketch over here to view the wall assuming the height of the each story is 10 foot I'll say my 
height of the wall is 10 foot and length along y length of the wall along y is 5 foot as per the example and the thickness that we are assuming is 6 inches okay next coming to e bend and e shear this you don't need to change it as long as the stiffnesses of these walls does not vary so let's assume that these are concrete walls all of them so all those walls have same stiffness so you don't need to change e bend and e shear but if you have different stiffnesses you need to assign based on that now my uh, wall end fixity would base be based on my end conditions so I'll be having fix, fix pin and fix pin and this would uh, help in determining the deflection so once I have the and put it all the information I'll select add element again coming to the next wall and I'll be inputting my wall rotation of 90 degrees then wall thickness will be 6 inches wall length will be 5 foot coming to xcg and ycg so let's say this is wall number 2 my xcg would be uh, positive 6 and ycg would be positive 2.5 so as you can see uh, the image gets drawn okay and as you see this x mark is where the center of load is being applied nothing but this is our centroid that we calculated was in x direction 10 foot and in one y direction 5 foot now coming to my third wall I change my end conditions I don't need to change this I add the third wall make it 90 degrees and height would be 10 foot wall length would be 5 foot thickness would be 6 inches this doesn't change my end conditions changes trying to a third wall let's see so my xcg would be zero because right now it's exactly located at the center of the wall whereas ycg would be negative 2.5 so this would be negative 2.5 and xcg would be zero so as you can see my three walls over here and that is my x is my exact center of load application and as you can also see this as the center of the rigidity now uh, once i have entered my walls i will go back to my load magnitude now as you know these walls are facing 90 to 70 degrees angle if you have horizontal walls that would be 0 and 180 degrees so I will select 90 and 270 degrees and I will make sure this is 100 kips load being applied at the center of load application centroid and coming to my calculations so I have my calculations over here resisting level 1, 2, 3 and my shear force is being equally distributed into three. Now, if I move that wall by, let's say, if I move this wall by one foot on this side, then my distribution would vary a little bit. Let's do that. For example, like if I have this, and if I move this, let's say by one foot. Okay, so my 
x c g for this wall would just vary by negative one foot. Now if I go to resisting elements and select negative one over here, okay, and and as you can see the distribution got changed like the shear force coming into it got changed this gives you little bit more information and as level 3 to now we have direct shear and then torsion being applied and that makes like for the worst case scenario like in label in wall number two we have uh, torsion which is positive and shear is also positive so that adds up whereas uh, in label in wall one and wall three we are just designing it for direct shear. Okay, uh, now moving on. So you can see your center of load application, your rigidity, center of rigidity moves as the wall moves here and there. Now going to my general tab. So as I, as I was talking about this load, sorry, location of shear application. Now let's say i want to keep my walls like this as they are but due to some varying thickness my center of load application varies i mean it moves by one foot in x direction positive direction and one foot in positive y direction so in that scenario i'll apply distance from x datum point And distance from y datum point and now my center of load application moves to that location now if you see your calculations you should get different values and this 44 I would assume is because of the torsion as you can see 11.5 tips so this is just a simple example of how to do torsional analysis of rigid diaphragms. The most important thing is to make sure that the walls used in the project are of same stiffness. If they are of different stiffness, you need to assign your E-band and E-shear accordingly. So this ends my tutorial. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay.